Um, I want to talk about three things really. So I want to talk a little bit about primary, as James said, and talk about collaboration and how we might uh, integrate collaboration with competition. Um, I want to talk about teachers and how we improve the quality of teachers and teaching. Um, and then I want to talk a little bit about what I think the Conservatives' overall approach and messaging um, should be as part of the school's revolution. Um, so on the first, as James said, we, we put out a report uh, last week around primary schools, which some people will have picked up, um, which talked about how you uh, could turn all primary schools into academies over the next five years. But importantly, the reason why we said that was not because it's academies for academies' sake, not because of an ideology that we think academies are better, uh, and indeed we painstakingly went through the report and said we didn't say that, which of course didn't stop lots of people uh, accusing us of having said just that. What we're interested in for primary schools is how you embed the next stage of the school's revolution, which has hitherto predominantly been at secondary level, down into the primary level. So how can you combine the best of autonomy and the best of accountability with collaboration? How can you share the best practices of the best teachers, the best heads, the best schools? How can you make it so that it's not one school in Southern that's getting 100% of its kids at level four, but how can that school share its practice so that not just one school with 200 children is getting that approach, but two, three, five, ten schools are getting that approach? And our argument was that academy chains give you that ability of collaboration, they give you that ability of shared practice, but because of their structure, because of their shared accountability, because of the way in which executive heads have greater control, uh, one of the reasons why ARC schools are so successful is because they do have this kind of shared pedagogical approach across their schools. If you go into an ARC school, you know what you're going to get, you're going to get a sort of relatively uh, similar approach to the way in which they teach English and maths, for example. That's one of the things which makes them so successful as a chain. That's what we're interested in primary schools. And I think one criticism I have of this government, like the last government, is it has been too secondary focused. It has been too focused, I think, on GCSEs and A-level schools. I'm not saying those aren't important, but 87% of the variance between what the best child in the country and the worst child in the country gets at GCSE is baked in by the age of 11. Mm -hmm. And 79% is baked in by the age of seven. So everything that we focus on, everything that we do, about making sure we're interested in social mobility and about rising standards at 16. It's all done at primary, or, or even at early years, children's mental health, a whole, whole different debate. But we've got to focus more on primary, we've got to look at how we improve the standards of primary schools, uh, and that's what our report talks about. Teachers are self-evidently the most important thing in the system. Um, but there sometimes seems this strange dichotomy where people say, no, no, we're not talking about structures, we don't care about structures, we just care about good teachers. Um, and what I always say to that is, good teachers don't emerge in a vacuum, and they don't operate in a vacuum. How do we get good teachers? They don't fall from the sky. They are trained, they're recruited, they're deployed, they're paid, they're developed, they progress in a system of schools. And so my question is, how can we make sure that the most effective teachers are working where they're most needed? How can we develop incentives in the system so that, for example, teachers are not just teaching the CD borderline children, which fortunately the accountability system has now changed, but also more often, how can we make sure that they're in the schools that need them the most? We know the most effective teachers make a phenomenal difference, and we know they make a phenomenal difference in particular to children who have low, lower socioeconomic status. So how can we get it to be where teachers are moving to some of the, best, uh, some of the, the most challenging schools in the country at scale? So going far, far beyond the, the kind of the laudable attempt of programmes like Teach First, how can we make it so that hundreds and thousands of teachers every year are moving to school? So one of the things that I'd like to see the Conservatives think about is ways in which they can do that, using the paid flexibilities that exist, using the fact that people premium money, thinking about ways of financial incentives for, for teachers to exist in particular schools, looking at ways we can develop further career structures, looking at things we might be able to do on continuous professional development. How can we not just address teacher workload, which is a really, really important issue, but how can we make the environment so that it's attractive for the best teachers to go into the most challenging schools? That has to be part of the next part of the revolution. And I guess then it just leads me on to my last point, which is about the overall approach. And um, I could not agree more with what James said about the assisted places. Uh, scheme. Um, we, know, we know how this story ends. This was a story that was run in 2001 and in 2005. Uh, state scholarship, pupil passport, ladders out for a few rather than a focus on the many. This is not what this party should be talking about. This is not about standards for all. And one of the things that I think that made education such a success story for this government and something where they should be so proud of going out on the doorsteps in 2015 and talking about what they've done is a couple of things. The first, as James said, is a clear focus on parents and pupils, talking to the many, not talking to themselves, not talking to small audiences, 
focusing on what parents up and down the country care about. The second thing is an unashamed focus on outcomes for all, especially the poorest, talking the language of social mobility, talking the language of progressives, talking about those children who need the most help. That's the thing that makes education work. And policies that speak to people. So whether it is free schools, or the people premium, or changes to behavior, or changes to curriculum, really, really tangible things. And not being afraid to take a fight to other parties. Not being afraid to cede the language of state education. Not being afraid to cede the language of opportunity for the poorest to the opposition, but accepting where there's cross-party consensus. So appropriating Andrew Adonis and his ideas, appropriating Tony Blair and his ideas, who in turn, of course, took it from Ken Baker and the City Technology Colleges back in the 80s. You know, there was a long tradition of education reform in this country. It's a cross-party aim, and this party should be adopting that language, and this party should be talking the language of educational reform. So I'm delighted that Nikki's taken on this role. I'm delighted uh, to hear her speech from the platform about how the work will continue because the next stage must be to continue to focus on everyone. It must be to continue to hold the centre ground. It cannot be about the ladders out for a few. It cannot be about something which concerns only a small section of the electorate. It has to speak to everyone. And one of the reasons I like working in education policy is education is profoundly optimistic. Education speaks to a better tomorrow. It speaks to the improvement of life chances for every parent and every people in this country. And if this party stands for anything, it should stand for that. It should stand for a language of optimism that says everyone has a chance to do better, everyone can transform their lives. Look at what has happened since 2010, look at what we are going to do from 2015. Thank you. Well, you've found your next week. I have. Yeah, well, 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 very good. Very good. Maybe next October.